Hello everyone, welcome to this episode, Protect Your Canadian Dream. I'm Ted Natividad with Incon.ca. I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. In this video, we're going to look into the five important ways on how to protect yourself against immigration fraud, such as identifying fake websites, email, phone calls, deals, documents or services. These ways are very basics and fundamentals. The main goal of this video is to educate and prevent you from becoming a victim of immigration services scam. I'm always getting emails and phone calls from friends, clients, relatives about immigration process, fees or documents, as well as fake websites. So I thought I would make this video to answer those questions. Let me grab a pen here for a sec. Okay, first one is know the Canadian immigration process. Let's uh, focus on one program, the Temporary Foreign Worker. If you want to come to Canada to work, you should have a Canadian employer who is going to offer you a job. <clears throat> now, you need this document, Labor Market Impact Assessment, or formerly known as LMO, or Labor Market Opinion. The Canadian employer is going to uh, get permission from the government to hire foreign national and offer that job in the absence of a Canadian or permanent residence to fill in for that particular job position. Now, once a positive LMIA is issued, you can apply for work permit. I'll show you how this document looks like. This is a uh, sample here. So you need this number. <clears throat> That's what you're going to enter in one of your application forms for your work permit. So without this document, you can't apply for work permit. And this is a good source of information about your employment. You'll know your employer information here and the job information. So you have the business address, business name, uh, your wage per hour, numbers of hours that you are going to work per week and your overtime rate after that uh, hours that you need to perform a week. So basically that's the steps involved before you can apply for your work permit and visa you have to have an employer first who's willing to offer you a job and you have to have the document known as labor market impact assessment. The second one is you should know different immigration documents. These are the two important documents that you need to know. At least you should know how do they look like. And uh, at the same time, you should know um, their differences. So this is temporary resident visa. This is used to enter Canada and this one here is the work permit. Okay, so for you to be legally um, <clears throat> working in Canada, you should have these two documents. If someone offers you a, uh, a visa and promise you that you can go to Canada and work without this document here, you cannot still work in Canada because you need this document work permit to legally work in Canada. Okay. Now, where we apply these documents? You can apply these documents to a visa application center. So it depends upon the country of your citizenship and or country of your um, residence. Remember that only Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada can issue these documents. There's no other um, companies that can give you these important immigration documents. Now, this is a fake Canadian visa. 
if you want to compare with the right one here at the uh, issued ad section the right one says manila this is where the visa application center uh, located at while on this side it's a santa cruz laguna so there are other things that you could look into to determine whether the document is fake or not but uh, this time for this video i just want to point out on that area so the third one you should know your representative two important things that uh, i want to emphasize on uh, this way um, there is paid representatives and there is unpaid representatives so if you want to um, ask your friends or your family members to help you out with your application such as gathering documents or filling out the forms then uh, you can do so however if you want a professional to look after your documents such as a member of a Canadian law society or a member of immigration consultants of Canada Regulatory Council, then they must be licensed and active. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you online um, where you should go to check the, your representative, whether or not they are authorized, licensed, and So if your representative is a member of ICCRC or Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant, you can go to their website, ICCRC. Then click this one here, find an immigration professional. Click English. If you have information about your consultants, here you can type his or her last name, click search, then down here you will find the complete name of your consultant, whether that consultant is active or not, and the place where he is or she is doing his or her business, as well as his or her license. Okay. Now, if you don't have the name, you can also just simply type the license. Now, it's very important that your consultant is not only licensed, but also active. If your consultant is a member of Canadian Law Society, uh, an immigration lawyer, you can go to Canadian Law Society. I believe they have their own Check whether their members are still active or not. So if you go for lawyers here, um, give me a sec. I'm sorry, I got the wrong website. So finding a lawyer. So this is where you should go. So you can actually go here and click this hyperlink. Then it will bring it to this web page. You can type the name of your consultant who is a member of a Canadian Law Society. Say um Edgar, the last name, then it will show all immigration lawyers or lawyers that are um, active. Okay, so that's how you should do it. All right, let's go to the fourth one. Know the Canadian Immigration Service fees. Now, 
first thing you should um, know that IRCC or Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada does not accept cash or personal checks. There are only two methods that are acceptable to pay your service fees. One is e-payment using credit cards. You can go online and uh, pay for your service fees. You go to the RRCC website or through certified check money order in Canadian funds made payable to the Receiver General for Canada. So you can pay your service fees, cash or personal checks. Okay, so you have to remember that. Now here's, a, here's an email that I got from one of my clients. She received this email from this company it's a fake website she was being required to send 350 uh, US dollars see it's even in, in US dollars not in, on, on Canadian currency um, in exchange of her visa through um, money transfer order um, via Western Union so and the headquarters is in USA they're claiming that they are uh, a Canadian government that can issue visa work permit in exchange of this money um, again if we go back to what we have learned that IRCC doesn't accept cash or personal checks so remember that the last one you should know your available resources if you suspect immigration fraud and if you're in canada you can call ircc hotline uh, let me show you that you can go here and uh, you can call this number okay this is the Hotline of Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada. Or you can call RCMP or the Canadian Border Services Agency or CBSA. If you are overseas, you can call your respective visa application centers. I'll show you how to do that. Let's go. Uh, now your visa application center depends on number one your country of citizenship or your country of residence now if we go here and type say Philippines there we have two visa application centers in the Philippines so if you click that go to their contact as a web page you can um, see their hotline here the phone number so say you, if you receive an immigration document that you um, think not real you can call them give that give the number to them that the immigration document and they can confirm to you whether the document is from them okay so and also if you are at uh, your respective um, country of residence you can get in touch with the law enforcement agencies uh, responsible all right so thank you very much i hope you like the video we have some more videos for you please go to imcon.ca talk to you soon